Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome to another developer Q&A video for Eve Echoes. Each week the developers take four questions posed by you, the community, respond to those questions and post the responses to the Eve Echoes Facebook page, Twitter account and somewhere deep in the deepest recesses of the game. Each week I take these responses, I go through the questions and the answers, and I add my own personal thoughts and opinions to them. If you have thoughts and opinions you would like to add, please do let me know by commenting down below on this video, and if you have a question for the developers, make sure you click the link in the description of this video, it'll take you through to a Google document that you can complete, ask your question, and if your question is one of the ones chosen to be answered, you will win a month of Basic Omega. And on the subject of giveaways, remember, I give three lucky people every single week a month of Combo Omega. One of them is chosen at random from my YouTube comments for that week. The other is chose, the other two, sorry, are chosen from my Discord's public channels. So make sure you're in my Discord and commenting on YouTube here to be in with a chance of winning a month of Combo Omega. Now before we go any further on this particular video, I do also just want to let you guys know that the uh, development team have finally formalized the Eve Echoes content creator program. I'll put a link for that in the description as well, so if you are considering trying your hand at making content for Eve Echoes, absolutely awesome. It's really easy to do, heck if I can do this, anyone can. I'm more than happy to advise anyone who wants to get started. I've got a couple of videos out there, how to edit on your phone, record on your phone, all that kind of thing. Remember, until about a month and a half ago, I was making my content entirely using just my phone. So I would love to help you guys out. Make sure you are applying for that content creator program if you want to give it a go. Good luck to everyone. Otherwise though, with all that said and done then, let's jump into the developer Q&A here for the week of the 13th to 19th of April. April. God, this year is going so quick. So the first question. The nickname feature is very useful, but is possible to use it without having the pilot added to contacts, or at least possible to add nicknames to corp mates without having them in contacts. This is basically, you can actually assign nicknames to, feet, uh, to, to pilots that you have added to your contact list as an easy way of memorizing who they are. Very useful if you have some people who are on alts, for example. So here, any Paulin responds, Thank you for your suggestion, we'll also discuss how to further optimise the communication experience between pilots. And I kind of get this, this is a useful little quality of life thing, the ability to sort of add someone who's in your corp and change their name to so and so alt 1 or so and so alt 2. At the same time though, it does kind of detract from a lot of things, I think nicknames works for having people on your contacts as a way of memorising who they are, but having it just constantly pop popping up in like uh, alliance chat or corp chat. I'm not so sure this is overly useful. Quality of life change that we could add at some point in the future perhaps, but I'm, I'm not seeing a real need for this, especially since I don't think a lot of people are even aware that the actual nickname feature exists in the game at all. I'll be honest, I wasn't until I saw this question and then jumped into the game and went, oh, Okay, so that's a thing, and I've no idea how long that has been a thing for. Am I going to use it personally? Probably not, because at this point in time, I've already memorized who my friend's alts are, um, and it's a nice easy way there, and if they're not in corporation anyway, well, the nickname feature does what it needs to there. I do like that they are still looking to optimize the communication experience between pilots. Um, there's talk of us eventually getting in-game voice chat. Um, the Chinese server has voice chat but doesn't have auto-translate. We have auto-translate but we don't have voice chat. Though again, in fairness, most of us are using Discord for fleet comms and stuff like that, so I don't know. I don't know. I think there's definitely ways to optimize the communication experience. Adding links and stuff like they have been is a great way of doing it. The fact that you can now open up your communication tabs and you can go into like an info and put out a scout alert and things like that. That's pretty cool. And I'm looking forward to seeing more stuff like that added to the game as it goes on. Oh, the big question here. This is the one that's to do with the thumbnail. With the upcoming balance patch, I have one concern. Stealth bombers. The interceptor balance I appreciate, but the speed nerf to all ships via skills has me concerned. Bombers were not in a great spot. Will there be any changes to other frigate class ships to increase their usability on the battlefield? I love the idea of stealth bombers, but I'm having a hard time using them well. Is this Bradrick by any chance? <laughs> 
<laughs> I've been talking with people a lot recently about stealth bombers. This one actually fits quite close to home. I've literally spent, when was it, Thursday, um, three and a half to four hours going over the maths, looking at missile application and things like that to talk about stealth bombers, and I'll come back to that in a moment. So Wilson responds, as you mentioned, we got a lot of valuable feedback from the test server. Mm, no, I think you got a lot of feedback from the test server. I don't think most of it was valuable. I think a lot of it was just people throwing their toys out the pram. I don't even think most of it came from people on the test server, but hey, let's just move on from that one. In the official patch, we will reduce the amount of change that skills make to the ship speed. Yes, it went from 45% being given by command ship, uh, the ship command skills, down to 40%. So frigate command at 555 now only gives you a 40% flight velocity boost down from a 45% boost. That is not a 5% nerf. If you do the math on that, say take a ship that moves at 1000 meters per second, add on 45%, then take a ship that moves at 1000 meters per second and add on 40%, you can calculate that that is a 3.45% reduction, which is just not much at all. It hasn't really done anything in the game, if I'm being completely honest. And that's just by understanding how the actual mechanics work in the background. It's not a huge change at all. 3.4% to any subcaps. It's not a big thing. And I I actually disagree that this does anything to stealth bombers. Stealth bombers, if you're in a stealth bomber, you shouldn't really be orbiting. That's not what they're designed to do. I know that's the best way to use them right now. Please don't at me and be like, you know, oh, no, of course you orbit with them, Benzi. You even orbited in your hound video. Yes, of course, because that's the only way to currently play them. Ultimately, look, I get it. People complain about like siege mode on the Raven Striker, but at least siege mode is still useful on the other three. Bombard mode is not useful on any of the bombers. It actually makes the situation worse. If you are in a bomber three and you are targeting a battleship, something that they are designed to be able to kill, then you actually lose application and your damage will decrease if you are firing in bombard mode, I did tests on this recently, I was doing about 640 damage per volley in standard mode. If I activated bombard mode, that dropped down to about 400. It is a significant drop. It doesn't help. It's just the fact that the application nerfs are so insane on what are already really bad application on large torpedoes. As Nina pointed out recently, the missile application stats are copied piecemeal from EVE Online, which kind of makes sense until you realise that ultimately everything in EVE Echoes moves faster and a lot of the ships are smaller, which means missile application across the board is just worse, which is why they keep buffing damage on missiles and hoping that that will fix the problem. It won't. We need to change the application dramatically. And there are a lot of people who point out that small torpedoes and medium torpedoes actually have better application than their alternatives. So small torpedoes have better application than small missiles. Medium torpedoes have better application than medium missiles. But large torpedoes have worse application than large missiles, and that is the case in EVE Online as well. Should it be the case here? No, I don't agree it should. I think ultimately, stealth bombers need a lot of changes, and the math that I was doing was basically a fixed bombard mode, because what is the point in having a bombard mode if it literally makes your ship worse in every conceivable way? Um, so I've been doing some maths on that, there will be a video eventually, when I get back from Masuna and I'm back in decent Wi-Fi and can record and do all that nice and easily, I will have a stealth bomber video coming. Um, does the patch affect stealth bombers much? No, they were trash before, they are garbage still now, like I want them to be good, they just aren't. And we had an interesting discussion on the Eve Echo's official, uh, official Discord, some people were like, oh, that math doesn't matter, just scale it up with like 10 more ships, and I'm like, yeah, if you take 10 ships, then you just multiply all the maths by 10, and it's still crap. So, uh, I don't know. Bombers are in a weird place. I am talking with Melos at the moment about them. I've made some suggestions. I will let you guys know what happens, and that video will be out soon, so subscribe if you aren't already. Moving onwards, question three. Hello developers, during the Neon Rain event you did karaoke and it was quite fun. Yeah, I'm a little sad I missed out on that actually, fancy flexing my vocal muscles next time. Are there any similar events planned in the future? Now, Mike Lee kind of misses the point I think here. In June there will be similar special effects for the station, including new background music and special station interior effects. Stay tuned. 
And that's cool, I actually did enjoy the fact that when you docked up at a station in Neon Rain, it had new music and new station graphics. It was really cool, and I know it irritated some people, but I personally really liked it, and I'm not gonna pretend that I didn't. Ultimately though, should we get a karaoke event on Discord again? Yeah. Yeah, that was a lot of fun, and I would like to actually, you know, get up the guts to try it myself there, do a bit of Bon Jovi or something. <laughs> anyway, moving on, question number four. When the attributes of ships and modules are adjusted in updates, such as the upcoming balance patch, or obviously the now live balance patch, do the adjustments also affect NPC pirates that use the same types of ships and weapons? For example, would NPC pirates' large cruise missiles have longer range post-balance because of the 25% flight velocity adjustment? Would NPC pirate rocks also get HP boosts because of the 31.6 adjustment to its shields, armor, and structure post-balance? And as Wilson confirms here, yes, absolutely. The ships that pirates fly in the game are absolutely the exact same ships that we are flying. They have the same stats, same modules. It's just they choose to activate them differently, I think. So you kind of get a situation where, you know, occasionally you'll have like a Maelstrom using missiles and a Typhoon using turrets, which means those are not particularly effective because the turrets on the Typhoon aren't getting any bonuses and missiles on a Maelstrom aren't getting bonuses, which is why you can have a Maelstrom with turrets and a Maelstrom with missiles, and the Maelstrom with turrets will apply much more damage to you. Um, you also notice situations where, for example, you'll be attacking a ship and it just doesn't seem to be taking much damage compared to another one of the same type. That could be that it's using adaptive invulnerability fields or armor hardness and things like that. Um, the ships aren't necessarily fully fit for pirates, um, but they do use the same modules and the same overall stats. I think there are some tweaks to the stats here and there, like it's a flat amplifier um, to the amount of damage that they take and things like that, but for the most part, if you are buffing a ship for players, it is being buffed for the pirates in, uh, in anomalies as well, anomalies and encounters. Anyway, that brings us to the end of this video. Not overly much to go on in this one. Um, as I said, there is going to be a Stealth Bomber video, so do stay tuned to the channel if you're interested in hearing more of my thoughts about Stealth Bombers. Believe me, the math on this one absolutely baked my noodle, and I'll be doing my best to explain that in a nice, simple, straightforward manner. Nicknames, I'm not sure it's really that much of a thing, but eh, it could always be nice. Um, the special effects for stations are coming back. I like that they're doing that in events now. And yes, buffs to ships, buff the pirates as well. Anyway folks, that about covers it for this week's developer Q&A. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. Of course, this video is just my personal thoughts and opinions. I'd love to know what you guys think too. Anyway, thanks for watching this one right the way to the end folks. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden!